3D printing is really cool. Uh, obviously, right? <laughs> you can design objects like this Yi camera uh, protector slash holder. You can design them very quickly uh, in your computer and you can print them out, you can prototype them. And if you want changes, you can just whip them right out. Uh, but the only thing that is not cool about 3D printing is that you have to spend a lot of money getting into a printer. And then once you have the printer, it is not easy to keep it running well. Uh, my friend Brett, whose YouTube channel is W-O-N-T-E-E, -E -E, Wan T, he designed this, by the way, and if you all, you all are going to now fill up the comments like you do every time you see this awesome thing, asking about it. That's where you should go. He has a video up describing it, uh, and you can go over there. He has a, even a Thingiverse link. You can download it and print it yourself. And that's the thing. He says, don't get into 3D printing unless you just love 3D printing. The best thing to do is to find a friend who has a 3D printer and let them print things for you. Because once you've got the printer running, it costs you five cents worth of plastic to print something out. But, um, but there's a whole lot of work and money getting the darn thing running. But there's another downside of 3D printing, at least when it comes to mini quads, and that is that, like, I don't, you guys who know about 3D printing instantly know what kind of plastic this is. I don't know off the top of my head, but it when you 3D print something, it has these uh, layers that it builds up as it prints, and so it's weak along those layers. So in a crash, this is what happens. In a crash, it shatters along those layers, see? And, and this happens, it doesn't happen maybe the first time. Actually, I had to work harder than I thought I would to do that. Maybe it's a cumulative thing, but eventually these things shatter along those layers and they break. So what can you do? You know, here's what I'm here to tell you about. This is a material called thermoplastic polyurethane, TPU. And this stuff is amazing. Now, I don't know if it just got invented or what, but I've only just started seeing it coming out uh, in the 3D printing world. Uh, the first time I saw it was Andy Shen uh, prints the Mako pod out of this stuff. And when I heard that Andy Shen was 3D printing a quadcopter pod, I thought, well, first of all, Andy's no idiot, but if you print a quadcopter pod out of this stuff, it's going to shatter. It's going to break. It's not going to be strong enough. It's not going to be optimal. It's going to be heavy. No good. But this stuff, check this out. Look what it does. Look, that's 3D printed. It is flexible, but sort of semi-rigid. It holds its shape, but because it's flexible, it's super strong. This stuff is amazing. So, TPU, thermoplastic polyurethane. Uh, I think that if you're interested in 3D printing stuff and you need toughness and, and semi-rigidity, but also enough flexibility to be able to take a hit, this is really cool stuff. Um, it's rigid enough that for the Mako pod, for the Shendrones Mako, uh, he has slits cut in it to hold like the flight controller and the video uh, transmitter, right? And those, those slits, they just slide right in. It holds them, but it still has enough give that's not just going to shatter and break the first time you crash. So that's this, that's this stuff. TPU, thermoplastic polyurethane. And if you are interested in 3D printing stuff, but you haven't liked the durability of stuff like this, give it a look. That's all for now.